Hi, my name is Christoph Atlas, and today I'd like to talk about how to connect to the Bitcoin network through Tor. Tor is a privacy network, and basically many people participate in it. And when you use Tor, you're able to assume other people's identities temporarily. This is something that they allow you to do voluntarily. And in doing so, you're able to hide the geographic origins of your internet traffic. So when you want to use Bitcoin as anonymously as possible, Tor is a quite useful network to connect to the Bitcoin network through. Now, the way that I recommend people try to use Tor is using software called Tails Linux. Tails is a operating system that you can download, and you typically install it on a USB drive. And you can boot your computer into this Tails Linux operating system off of the USB drive. The nice thing about that is it's all uh, running in RAM, it's running in resident memory, it's not running from your hard drive. So you have a nice clean copy of Tails Linux, and as soon as you shut the computer down, uh, it reverts back to its original state. So there's no way of files remaining on the computer in between reboots of Tails Linux. The other thing about Tails Linux is that it makes it quite easy to connect to the Tor network. You don't have to do any extra configuration. And typically, if you're trying to run Tor on your Mac or your Windows machine, you do have to do a bunch of extra configuration to make sure that all of your internet traffic is going through uh, the Tor network. So Tails does all that for you. So I've already booted into Tails Linux. You can see there's starts out with this blue desktop. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to use the Bitcoin Qt client to connect uh, to Tor. So I've already downloaded the Bitcoin Qt client. I'll leave a link to the download um, in the video description below. And so I've downloaded this archive. So we're just going to go ahead and right click that, select extract here and we'll get a folder that's extracted. That's the Bitcoin Qt folder. If we go inside of that directory, in the binary directory, bin, and 32 for 32-bit because uh, Tails Linux is a 32-bit operating system, we're gonna see two files listed here. And the one that we're interested in is the Bitcoin-Qt file. This is the binary for actually running the Bitcoin Qt client. Now the first thing you'll want to do is you want to make sure that this file is executable. If you're copying it from a USB drive, then it may not be executable at first. One of the security features of Tails Linux is that when you're copying files from somewhere like a USB drive, it will make sure that the file is not executable. And this just makes it harder for malware to get inadvertently run on your computer. So we're gonna go ahead and right click that and go down to properties. We'll go to Permissions tab, and we'll just make sure that this checkbox here is checked for Allow Executing File as Program. In this case, I actually downloaded the Bitcoin Qt uh, file directly from the internet, so it's, it's already checked, so that could, that's good. And now there's two ways to open up Bitcoin Qt. I'll go through them both. Uh, one way is just double click on this executable file. Now, when you first open up Bitcoin Qt and Tails Linux, the first thing that you may notice is that none of the Bitcoin blockchain has been downloaded. And in fact, if you don't do anything extra, you can't download it. It'll say no block source available here in the bottom left. It's about 270 weeks behind in terms of being up to date with the blockchain. If we hover over this little icon in the bottom right, it will say that there are no active connections to the Bitcoin network. The reason for this is because uh, by default, all of the traffic for Tails Linux is routed through Tor, and we need to actually instruct the Bitcoin Qt client to do the same. So it's trying to connect to the internet, but Tails Linux is blocking it from doing so until we give it more specific instructions. So the way that we do that, we'll go to the top of the Bitcoin Qt uh, window and go to Settings, Options, and then we'll go to the Network tab in the Options. And we just want to check this box for connect through SOX proxy. 
it will tell us that uh, we need to restart the Bitcoin QT client. However, I found that in recent versions of Bitcoin QT, we don't actually need to do that. It used to be the case that you had to open it up once more. Now, these default settings are perfectly fine. Uh, we'll use the proxy IP for the local host, which is 127.0.0.1 on port 9050 and SOX version 5. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And once I do that, Bitcoin QT should now be able to connect to uh, the Tor network that will allow it to get out to the internet and start downloading the blockchain from the rest of the Bitcoin network. And you'll start to see that the number of weeks behind is going to start decreasing. It says that it's synchronizing with the network. And if we hover over this little icon here at the bottom, we have a bunch of active connections to the Bitcoin network. So that's all you need to do to connect to the uh, Bitcoin network using Tor. It's quite, quite easy using Tails Linux. If you need any help uh, installing Tails Linux on a USB drive or figuring out how to boot your computer uh, into Tails Linux off of the USB drive, these are all things that I explain in my book entitled Anonymous Bitcoin. You can find the, the book at anonymousbitcoinbook.com, which I'll link to in the description. So the last thing I want to show you is how to open Bitcoin QT from the command line. And you might want to do this if you need to pass some extra parameters to Bitcoin QT. One of the downsides of connecting to the Bitcoin network to download the blockchain through Tor is that Tor tends to be a bit slower. And the blockchain is so large in size, it's around 15 gigabytes right now. It can take quite a long time to download the entire thing. So what I sometimes advise people to do is if they just want to uh, grab the blockchain kind of quickly, they can copy it on one computer, they can download the blockchain on one computer, copy that over on a USB drive, and uh, pass that USB drive location as an argument to the Bitcoin QT executable. And then it will actually, rather than trying to download the entire thing through Tor, it will just uh, use the blockchain information that you have on your USB drive. But you do have to pass some extra parameters to Bitcoin QT to, to make that happen. And in that case, uh, you'll want to use the command line. So uh, let me do, let's, let's do that now. We are gonna go into the Bitcoin folder. In order to execute commands in the terminal, you type in the command and then you press enter. You can open up terminal but by just clicking on this little black box at the top, it's labeled terminal. And you, of course you can tab complete to um, finish the file, file names for you if you don't want to type the entire thing in. So press enter. The ls command just lists the files that are in the directory. And we're just trying to get to the same place as we are in this file browser right here. So I'm going to go into bin. I'm going to go into the 32 folder for 32-bit. And we'll see that Bitcoin QT is listed right here. In order to execute it, I'm going to do dot slash Bitcoin dash QT. And if I was going to pass any arguments into Bitcoin QT, this is where I would do it right here. I would type the arguments right here after a space after Bitcoin QT. In fact, here's an easy argument that we can uh, pass in right now. This actually gives you a list of all of the command line arguments for Bitcoin QT. So you do dash dash help. And that will give you a little printout of all of the many possible command line arguments that you can pass in. There's a couple in particular that you need to use when you're uh, trying to use blockchain information that's been downloaded on another computer. We'll want to use the datadir option and also the dbcache option to speed things up a little bit. But I'm not going to go into that right here. Um, these are things that I covered in the book, but for now I'm just going to open up Bitcoin QT. So no command ar ar line arguments for now. And open it right up and you can see it goes right back to where it was before. So this is, the, I think, the easiest way to uh, connect to the Bitcoin network using Tor. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any follow-up questions. 
And if you'd like some more information about how to use Bitcoin anonymously, please check out my book at anonymousbitcoinbook.com. Thank you very much.